Aloha YouTube, what is up? Untied Hawaii here. Professor Untied here with episode 5 of Art of the Flip. If you guys have not watched episodes 1 through 4, I highly recommend you guys go check that out in the channel playlist below titled Art of the Flip. Reason being is because it's a progressive series, so you kind of need to watch episode 1 to get to where we're talking about today in episode 5. And what we are talking about today in episode 5 is actually one of the most asked questions that I get like via email, tweets, DMs, things like that. And that's asking how do you cut costs and where do you buy your materials to ship and just how do you save money overall because selling shoes can get expensive. Not only do you need to worry about shipping costs, you need to worry about shipping materials, so that's like boxes, tape, things like that. And you also need to worry about fees. So we're gonna be going over all of that today. And if you guys are interested in that, hit that sub button down below. If you guys are interested in this topic, hit that like button and it will greatly help the channel. Anyway, let's get right into it. So first things first, what I wanted to talk about is what method do I use to ship my shoes. So there's obviously like three main sources if you guys live in the US, which is USPS, uh, FedEx, and UPS. So depending on what I'm shipping, if it's from my web store, I typically use United States Postal Service. Reason being is because they have the cheapest prices. And the price that I use to ship the shoes, if it's an individual shoe from Hawaii, it usually costs about $20, which is kind of a lot, but it's what you have to do. If you're selling between a person to person, like say you're gonna have a PayPal transaction, PayPal invoice, you need to make sure that shipping is a priority for you. If it takes too long to get there, people will not wanna do business with you again. If the box is damaged before it gets there, people don't wanna do business with you again. So make sure you shell out that little bit of extra money so that you can get a good quality product to your customer. I use USPS, I know UPS can charge a little bit more, but that's, preference based I guess and FedEx I don't even use FedEx at all so I'm not too sure about the cost there but just from what I've been researching if you can fit a shoe into one of those large flat rate boxes which I really don't think you can unless they're like kid shoes then USPS is the way to go okay and with that being said your size of your box matters when you ship something out because USPS or UPS or FedEx will all charge you based off of the dimensions of your box so I've actually found the optimal dimension of a box that I use to ship out shoes and these usually fit shoes that go up to like size 13 or 14. Yeah, it's just the optimum price and bang for your buck. So this is the box that I use. I will attach a link in the description below so you guys can purchase this. The reason why I choose this box is because like I said, it fits a shoe perfectly. There may be a little bit of packing involved so I use like packing paper or whatever it is. I, I really just use whatever is around the house. Like, you guys can use things like this. Seriously, like, your brown paper bags from your shopping, grocery shopping, and things like that, you could use that to pack material. And for the most part, that gets the job done. You save money there. This box set, I believe through Amazon, is for 75 boxes, and that seems like a lot, but it actually makes it for like 90 something cents per box, which is really, really good in my opinion. I've seen people comment saying you should use the eBay boxes because they're cheaper. Unfortunately, if you're gonna send to GOAT or you're gonna send to a client, it doesn't really look good for your business if you're using an eBay box because it doesn't express you. So I try to use these plain brown boxes and like I said, this one's from Amazon and it costs $75 for 75 boxes. It's this perfect size box, you cut costs there. If you buy an individual box from like a store like Walmart or something like that, it'll be pretty pricey. I believe I was using Target before and Target for one of their boxes was like four, three or four dollars and that was way, way, way too much. You're gonna lose out on a lot of profit that way. So the best way to do that is to buy in bulk because if you buy in bulk, you obviously get better prices. And trust me, if you guys are really gonna get into reselling, you'll use all 75 of those boxes. I'm on my second set already and I need to order again. So I would highly suggest checking out that link in the description below, clicking on it, and you'll get the best bang for your buck there. So another cost that could add up for you guys is not only the box that you use, but also the tape that you guys use. Tape, I found is like way more expensive than boxes and it's crazy. So this is the tape that I use. It's this Duck Brand HD Clear or whatever it is. But again, buying in bulk makes for cheaper products. So I think this one was like 20 something bucks or something like that for six rolls. And you gotta also look at this right here. You have to look at the yards of how much you're getting, not how much of these individual things you're buying. The length is what matters, okay? It doesn't matter if you get eight of these and you only get like 400 yards. The yards is what matters because that's how much you can use. So 
that's an important tip. Again, this will be in the description down below via Amazon, 20 something dollars, really good deal. Like I said, you'll use this all the time when you're shipping, so great investment there. In terms of shipping and packaging, that's pretty much it that I use. Like I said, I try to recycle things that I can. Another good tip, if you guys do not have that much money to buy $75 worth of boxes or $20 worth of tape, is to kind of reuse the material that you get from your purchases. So if you buy something from GOAT, you buy something from Nike, Adidas.com, it does come in a box already. So what you do is you just take off all of that like tape and postage stuff on there. You cross out all of the numbers and things like that and reuse the box. You're gonna have to get some of your own tape, but I'm sure there's like a couple pieces of duct tape or something lying around your house. So utilize what you can. Like I said, try to recycle as much as you can because if you can use that box, that saves you that extra dollar from not touching your 75 boxes. And I mean, it does add up guys. This is if you're dealing with a lot, a lot of shoes. Start off with what you have. Like I've said before, instead of buying product, you can even sell your old used shoes, things like that. So really start off small. And then when you start to get more product and you're trying to sell a lot more, that's when you can buy those bulk items. And trust me, like it saves a lot of money. Boxes and shipping and tape and all of that stuff can add up. So that's my best advice there. Also, what I want you guys to focus on in terms of like fees and pricing and things like that, you really need to make sure that you're maximizing every single possibility you can to make a sale and to make profit. So that also means you have to look at fees. So I know the eBay fee is like nine something percent. The StockX fee is somewhere in that same ballpark. And honestly, the GOAT fee is in that same ballpark as well. People will say that GOAT is more expensive, but honestly, it it's so arbitrary for those little fees and that difference that I'd rather pay slightly more in terms of like a couple bucks to deal with a better customer service product like GOAT than using StockX and dealing with their very bad customer service. Because if something goes wrong, it really is just more trouble for you. Same thing with eBay. I know there's a lot of chargebacks and like problems through that venue. So just be careful. It's You'll see that those variations can add up. But if you price your shoes according to what you want as your final valuation and not the sale price itself, then you're in the clear anyway. So what does that mean? If I'm selling a shoe for $500 on GOAT, that means I'm expecting to make $445 back. So I'm only looking at the $445 number. And if that $500 is reasonable to sell, then that's good because I can make that $445 definitively. Focus on that. That way you can save money as well. But just be wary, I mean, be wary of the fees. It will catch up to you as well. There's a fee on GOAT, I think a 2.9% fee for PayPal. And it seems like it's a small number as well, but it can add up. I've actually just cashed out on like, I think a $3,000, $3,000 I cashed out. And with that 2.9% fee, it was something like 80 bucks or something like that. So it, it does add up, but I mean, again, that's only if you're dealing with large volumes of money. In the long run, if you can make a sale, through GOAT, it really doesn't matter too much. Ultimately, the best way you'll save on all of those costs though, is to sell locally. Selling locally, you don't need to ship, you don't need to pack, you don't need to deal with any of that. It's literally just a face-to-face -face transaction, cash for shoes. And that is the best way that you can go about doing that. So that is why I try to sell all of my shoes locally before I start looking outside to sell via like shipping and things like that. So again, maximize your profit revenue and that will be through selling locally. That's why I say it's so important to create connections with people in the community because if you don't, you lose out on that opportunity to sell locally and you lose out on all that potential revenue. So make sure when you do these sales and whatnot, you make it, you're actually a business. Present yourself as a business. Make sure you're professional when you're writing to people via message and stuff like that. Make sure you use politeness. It's just really like basic things that people like forget all the time. But if you really want to maximize profit, you need to do these things. So with that, the next episode will actually be about focusing on how to do a local sale. I don't want a lot of you younger kids to go out there making sales locally because there's a lot of sketchy stuff that can go on. So the next episode I'm going to talk about product safety or just being safe when you're selling shoes. It will be about selling safe locally as well as selling safe over the internet because there's a lot of fraud, there's a lot of fakes, you just got a lot of stuff that you have to deal with and I want you guys to be protected. So I'm going to tell you all about my background on that information and things that happened to me and yeah hopefully that doesn't happen to you. So stay tuned for that episode. That's it for this episode. I hope you guys hit those links down below via Amazon so you can purchase these things for really, really cheap and begin to start making a lot of money back. Anyway, till next time, Untied Away here. <laughs> I always forget, I'm a professor now. Professor Untied here. I'll catch you guys next class. Aloha, I'll see you.
class is dismissed. 